What's up, board game people? Still trying to get things back on a normal schedule. Today, we're going to take a deeper look at a project that caught my eye when it was announced. SAS Rogue Regiment is being put out by a seasoned indie studio, Wordforge Games, creators of several successful Kickstarter campaigns, such as Pocket Landship No Man's Land and D-Day Die 2nd Edition. Before we begin, I get no money from game companies for making my videos. SAS Rogue Regiment puts you in the shoes of SAS soldiers in the pivotal and deadly weeks following D-Day. You and your squad must carry out acts of sabotage deep behind enemy lines to help ensure the smooth advance and success of the Allies' war campaign. You will destroy ammo dumps, ambush convoys, and assassinate high-ranking officials in a bid to throw a wrench in the plans of the Axis war machine. You are a small regiment and taking on the full might of the Axis powers is out of the question. You operate in the shadows. Take out enemy patrols and sentries with any tools at hand. Use a rifle, use grenades, or make a scene and use explosives. Maybe your trusty fighting knife would be the quieter choice. You'll need to move quickly and quietly, leaving no trace, hiding bodies, and advancing on your objective, and setting up a fortified position to strike from. You're four soldiers who must fight like a hundred. The firefight is coming, and only death will stop you. SAS Rogue Regiment is a tactical stealth espionage experience for one to four players. The core game comes with nine missions before its stretch goals, and the They Who Dare expansion adds another five missions to that total. The missions are strung together in a story order that allows them to be played in a campaign and tell a complete tale, or you can play any of the missions as one-off scenarios and still enjoy the full experience. They're describing the game and its missions as a tactical sandbox. The missions are easily altered to include more or less players and utilize more or less map tiles. You can easily modify the stealth setting between easy, medium, and hard, and modify the event deck to completely rebalance the game and provide an easier or an extremely challenging experience. This campaign is offering the core game and an expansion, They Who Dare, packed full of components and content you need to play the game. They've also added the heavy metal add-on which contains a selection of heavily armored and equipped vehicles to ruin your day and grace your hit list. The add-on includes four additional vehicles, an event deck, several tokens, and a bonus mission. The Jaeger expansion allows a player to flip sides and control the Axis forces, attempting to thwart the regiment using a special asset deck and their own Jaeger forces. Now that you know the mission, let's look at how you can get your hands on the game should you choose to accept. The entry point here is the Rogue Trooper Pledge coming in at 45 pounds and getting you the core game, SAS Rogue Regiment, translation PDFs should you need them, and all appropriate stretch goals. For £65, you get the Rogue Warrior Pledge giving you the SAS Rogue Regiment core game, the They Who Dare expansion, translation PDFs, and all appropriate stretch goals. Finally, at £100, you get the Black Ops All-In Pledge, granting you the Black Ops Special Edition box with the core game, the They Who Dare expansions, the Heavy Metal expansion, the Jaeger expansion, the Kickstarter exclusive ATP Watch Timer, the Dice Tower, translation PDFs, and future add-ons and all appropriate stretch goals. And, as usual, you can grab access to the Pledge Manager for £1. There are several add-ons that are included in some of the Pledge levels, but are available for those wishing to mix and match as they please. The language packs come in at £3 for the printed language packs, and they're currently available in French and German, with Spanish and Italian as possibilities if there are 150 backers from those regions. For £15, you get the portable dice tray. At £45, you get another copy of the game. At £30, you can grab the They Who Dare expansion. For £5, you get the ATP timer. At £12, you get the dice tower. For the £12 asking, you get the heavy metal expansion. And for another £12, you get the Jaeger expansion. The campaign has been shooting through their monetary stretch goals. So far, they've added bonus missions, upgraded the event deck several times, added a Kickstarter exclusive event deck, made the interior of the game box playable, added alternate loadouts to existing operators and new operators, a box insert, and more. These will keep rolling throughout the campaign, and I'm sure we'll see several more revealed in the last week. Shipping for the project is fair enough, with VAT and taxes included in the shipping prices for the US, UK, EU, Australia, and Canada. 
So let's get down to brass tacks and my thoughts on the project. As I said near the beginning, I've been excited for the game since seeing it pop up on my radar for the first time. I guess it's a bit disturbing and wrong to say that the era interests me, but it does in an educational and somewhat somberly analytical way. We see war becoming a reality again in the 21st century, and it's hard not to be a bit retrospective. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Geopolitical landmines aside, the game does excite me a bit. I'm a fan of the stealth genre when it's done correctly. As always, I'll withhold my final judgment of their mechanics until I have the game in hand and I've had the proper time to develop an informed opinion. But what I have read of the rulebook leads me to believe that the dynamic difficulty levels presented and the methods used to govern the stealth meter here seem pretty spot on. Both sound and sight will play a role. Interfering in that are all kinds of factors such as cover, line of sight, movement types, and more. While the rules surrounding all this sound pretty crunchy, I see no reasons to be concerned that they'll bog down the pace of play unnecessarily. You're working with a line of sight tool here, but honestly I wish they'd included a field of view template to help guide players through muddy situations just a bit easier. While the rules are leaving plenty of room for tactical execution of your plan, they're still on the lighter side of a full-blown tabletop tactical game. What I'm trying to say is this is something with a little effort you could teach your kids or family to play. Now, whether the content is appropriate for the age of your family or not, I'm not opening that can of worms. I'll leave that up to you. If you haven't figured out, this channel's a bit more adult-tuned than some others. The artwork for the project isn't bad itself. The title or map art is pretty good, if a bit standard fare. And the tokens and cards look good. But the character portraits is where the money is. The characters have attitude. Their costume, pose, and facial expressions all tell a unique story. I love them. I think the cost here is pretty spot on as well. The core is a reasonable jumping end point, contains enough content to warrant the 45 pounds, and with the stretch goal missions you have quite a bit to play. The next step up at the Rogue Warrior Pledge is a pretty good deal too. You get a 10 pound discount on picking up the They Who Dare expansion. I was a bit sad that the only way to get the Black Ops box was to be forced into getting the Dice Tower and the Jaeger expansion that won't be necessary for all playstyles. Personally, I think I would grab the Rogue Warrior, add the Kickstarter exclusive ATP timer for kicks, and grab Heavy Metal. That gets you all the cooperative gameplay and enough extras to really change the missions up and allow me to replay them several times without getting bored. The stretch goal amounts are reasonable and have been essential in keeping the money flowing into the project. I expect there to be a good bump in the last few days, unlocking more content and perhaps one less add-on. If another add-on is unlocked, the Black Ops pledge will be totally worth grabbing. I was disappointed at the low funding goal. I think they set it a bit low so they could escape the backer uncertainty by funding quickly, but I question if they only really needed £5,000 to fund. I could be wrong, but most games need several times that much to be worth printing in mass. Overall, I think this will be a good mid-range board game that emulates just enough of that tabletop tactical experience without diving into the weeds. I get major Company of Hero vibes from the missions and small squad size, and if the missions are well written, I think it might even be a fun narrative jaunt behind enemy lines. If you're looking for a manageable tactical sandbox experience, wrapped in a bit of story, and allowing some freedom to experiment with different methods of achieving objectives, I think this one might be good for you. If you're on the fence, I'd say the core is priced right for the window shoppers, and you might find a new genre or game that you love. If you don't like semi-crunchy games that leave a bit of space for role lawyering, or you don't like taking missions off the rails a bit, this might not be the best fit for you. For me, if I can swing it, which is still a big if at the moment, I would do as I said before, and I'd get the Rogue Warrior Pledge and add what I want. If more add-ons become available that I would like, I might even consider the Black Ops All-In Pledge. But a big part of that is me wanting the box, and yes, I'm stupid like that. That's going to be it for this one. Hopefully you have a better feel for the game, and if it interests you, be sure and let me know in the comments. We're currently accepting votes for our Viewer's Choice Awards. I'm posting several different award categories, and you, the viewers, can vote for your favorite or favorites for each category. Check the community tab on the channels page to find all the categories and leave a comment with your vote. Each category will be open for voting for one week. 
We started with the most anticipated game being delivered in 2023, and I've been putting up new categories every three days, and I'll be doing so for the next little while. I'll be back soon with our month in review and maybe another video. I also have an unboxing coming for Phantom Epoch, a project that will launch early next year on Kickstarter. Thanks to everyone watching and commenting, and for all the well wishes. You are truly the best. Remember to leave a like or subscribe so you don't miss anything. Have a great week and play something fun this holiday season.